What's going on, gentlemen? This is Brent031. Appreciate you guys tuning in. In this episode of Infantryman's Guide, we're going to be covering some different ways to carry your night vision device on your individual load bearing equipment. Thanks for watching. All right, gentlemen, so I'm gonna show you some of the different methods that I've utilized over the years. And uh, what I'm specifically referring to are AN PVS 14 style night vision uh, devices, as well as uh, binos, okay? Now, this is the uh, the type of bag that I was first issued in the United States Marine Corps in the uh, early 2000s and uh, in the 2003 Iraq invasion. That's what we were issued our night vision in. Uh, and essentially, these, um, as you guys can see how the bag is designed and contoured, it essentially was designed to accommodate this skull crusher, this head mount, okay, that nobody really uses and absolutely hates, all right, because they're not very comfortable. Uh, but it was essentially a uh, all-purpose bag and uh, just, you know, everything could go inside there. It was very roomy. Um, it just wasn't the greatest bag, but it was, you know, it definitely got the job done. Now, it clips onto your belt with just a standard uh, you know, fast tech style buckle. And then it had a leg tie on here that you could tie this around your leg. I used a pouch like this all the way into probably the mid 2010s um, or even later. Uh, that's what they were still issuing our MVGs out to us in, in the United States Marine Corps, okay? Until this was superseded by a pouch like this. As you guys can see, it, uh, it has a zipper closure. And inside was just, uh, you know, had all your compartments that you can hold miscellaneous items. Uh, the big thing about it though, it had this padded piece and the padded piece was actually removable, but that padded piece is what protected your night vision, okay? So having that padded piece in there, and then uh, if you had your AN PVS 14s, they just slid right inside there, okay? And they were protected by that padding. And then uh, you could just zip up the bag. And then if you had a dummy cord, you know, this could be dummy corded to on your gear somewhere. Okay, so that's typically what you get in the United States Marine Corps nowadays um, and for the foreseeable future. I'm sure it's gonna be replaced eventually, if not already. Uh, but that is a, uh, a another thing you can get. On the surp surplus market, these are out there. I have seen these available uh, for purchase if you are interested in that. One thing you wanna ask yourself is, you know, are you one of these guys that thinks that your night vision has to be in a waterproof container? If that's the case, then uh, you might wanna look at getting something like this, a small Pelican case, okay? If you get a Pelican case like this size, I think this one is the uh, yeah Pelican 1050, all right? I cannot fit my MVGs in there with the, uh, the J-arm attached to it. I've gotta put it in there separ separately, okay? But I can get both items in there along with my dummy cord and close it up. All right, and there, my night vision is in a uh, waterproof uh, container. I also have a, uh, a dummy cord attached to this, and a purpose for that is I can stick this into a pouch, I can close this, and then I can dummy cord this to the gear. All right, so that if this pouch were to come undone during movement or whatnot, and it falls out of the pouch, it's still dummy corded to the gear, and I'm not gonna lose a valuable uh, sensitive item there, such as, you know, night vision equipment. Okay. So, with that being said, remember that these particular devices are designed to be used in rugged terrain and uh, arduous conditions and in inclement weather, okay? So, you do not have to baby your knife. It does not have to be in this waterproof case unless you're, uh, you know, planning a forge in a river or something. <laughs> At which point you can throw it inside a Willapeter bag or something along those lines. But I want to remind you guys that in the Marine Corps, this is what we're issued, all right? And before this, this is what we were issued. Just regular canvas uh, water resistant bags, all right? You can see the water resistant lining there. That's it, guys. They were not in, we do not get issued night vision in the military in these uh, little Pelican cases. But I understand in the civilian side of the house, you know, you have a lot of money, a money invested in this, and you might want to go this route, which is absolutely fine. Um, I've done this at One Shepherd because I have to carry uh, some additional stuff as well with my night vision to record images. But uh, you know, you can you can go that route, and uh, again, attach some 550 cord to it with a you know a small carabiner, and you can uh, dummy cord this and help prevent it from uh, falling out and losing it. All right, so that's a method. Okay, uh, I have multiple sets of gear. I'm trying to uh, standardize my gear so that I'm wearing, you know, OD gear in the spring summer time frame and Coyote gear in the you know winter time frame. 
Uh, I'm trying to make it the same style of gear, just a different color, okay? I understand most people just use the same set of gear. That's, this is what I do. I wear, I try to go with the OD for one shepherd and you know, the coyote in the winter, you know, I typically uh, are using at places like winter forge and stuff like that, all right? Um, I have found these style of pouches made by Eagle Industries and they're on the market right now, very cheap guys. I think this was like um, 15 or $16 at Sportsman's Guide. And I think I found this a little bit cheaper somewhere else. I can't recall where though. And uh, essentially the, all they are is this little section, padded section here that close with Velcro. And you can adjust these to make them the, the width and size you need. All right, and then you can take these and literally stick them inside a pouch like this. And you guys can see that it's making it into a padded pouch. And now I can take something like my MVGs and stick them in there. They're protected, all right? I have my dummy cord and I can dummy cord it onto uh, you know, the gear. All right, same thing over here. Same style of pouch. I'm taking my MVGs. I'm throwing it in there, I'm securing it. I've got the uh, 550 cord loop there and I can hook this mini carabiner up to that so that if this pouch somehow were to open up and these were to fall out, it's dummy corded and retained in my gear, all right? I can just tuck the excess gear in there. But that is, uh, that is how I'm carrying these MVGs on these particular sets of gear right now. And uh, it's pretty universal and like I said, these padded pouches are very cheap. If you guys can get these right now, suck them up on the civilian market if you wanna carry your MVGs like this, uh, highly recommend it, all right? Um, the bottom layer is not padded. So if you wanna add extra padding, you can do something like this. You can go and get an old uh, surplus ISO mat, cut a square, and you can line the bottom of the pouch with that, um, with that square to give you some padding on the bottom, if you so choose. The, uh, I'll remind you that, well, actually the surplus one does have some padding down here, okay? So uh, yeah, if you wanna add some padding down here in the bottom, you'll need to do that with these if, you're, if you wanna do that, all right? Uh, this one has a drain hole in the bottom, but you know this one, it's open on the side, so that's really not an issue whatsoever, okay? Uh, you can do the same exact thing with a saw pouch. So here's your 200 round box saw pouch. And you guys can see I'm sticking this insert in there. And it fits it perfectly. No issues. Just utilizing one of these padded inserts that are pretty prevalent on the uh, surplus market right now. So highly recommend that you guys pick those up. And that's pretty much it, guys. Those are, uh, those are the means in which I carry my MVGs. Well, that concludes this episode of Infantryman's Guide over different ways to carry your night vision devices. Hope you guys found this information helpful. Obviously, uh, this is one way, not the only way, and I encourage you guys to uh, find what works for you. Thanks for watching.